Welcome, and thanks for joining us for this special Global Art Showcase. My name is Cheryl Gherkin, and I'm the Educational Outreach Coordinator for Arizona Public Media, and I'm so excited to welcome you and your family to tonight's event, where we'll be showcasing performers from the local Asian American community. Are you guys ready for a night of music, dance, and culture? Let us know how you're feeling with the emoticons below. They're a fun way to express yourself to the group. And one of my personal favorites is the clapping emoticon. So if you see something tonight that you particularly like, go ahead and put that to use. And while you're doing that, take a look at the chat box. And if you haven't yet, say hi and let us know where you're tuning in from. This event is hosted by AZPM and the Pima County Public Library. So before we begin, let's turn it over to Amber Mathewson, Pima County Public Library's director, to welcome you to this month's Global Arts Showcase. On to you, Amber. Good evening and welcome. My name is Amber Mathewson, director of the Pima County Public Library. It is my pleasure to welcome you to tonight's Global Arts Showcase, a collaboration between Pima County Public Library and Arizona Public Media. Our two organizations have come together on this project as part of our many efforts to highlight the rich, diverse, and cultural life of Southern Arizona. And all of it is made possible by the diverse communities and people that have come to call this place home. As library patrons, you don't always get to see what we're doing behind the scenes, which is why I'm excited to tell you about the work of two teams at the library who have come together to put on tonight's event. First is our Welcome to America team, a group of staff working to support and elevate the voices of immigrants, as well as those who work in the wider network of immigrant services. This team works to make sure that the library is not only a welcoming place for everyone, but that we, that we are always learning and striving to meet the needs of immigrants and refugees in our community. And for this special Global Arts Showcase, we are also welcoming the participation of the Biblio Lotus team. Biblio Lotus is made up of library staff from across our system who are dedicated to supporting the value, culture, and voice of our Asian communities in Pima County. Last month was Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, which was celebrated by both AZPM and the Pima County Public Library with special programs and events. But these kinds of learning opportunities and celebrations should be happening all year long because it is always the right time to learn more about our neighbors. That is why we are proud to showcase the vibrant, thriving community of Asian artists in Southern Arizona. On behalf of Pima County Public Libraries, Welcome to America and Biblio Lotus teams and Arizona Public Media, it is my pleasure to introduce an evening of music and dance performed by the Purple Bamboo Ensemble and Tucson Sino Dance. Enjoy. Let's welcome our first guest of the evening, the Purple Bamboo Ensemble. Purple Bamboo is a performance and study group at the University of Arizona where students and community members alike come together to sing and play Chinese instruments. They'll be introducing you to their instruments and performing a festive musical piece called Happiness Year. Hi, my name is Jingxia, the director of the Purple Bamboo Ensemble. So the instrument that I played is called Gu Zheng. Gu means ancient, and Zheng is the sound of this instrument. So it's like... Its history can trace back to the Qin Dynasty, which is the first empire of the China. So it's almost 2,500 years old. And uh, uh, the, the other name of this instrument is called the benevolent and uh, wise instrument because the, when the Luthier made this instrument, they follow the universe and uh, also the nature, the law of the nature. And, uh, and also the instrument is pentatonic scale, which emphasizes the wu xing, so it's the gold, wood, and uh, water, and uh, earth and fire. So we can see the instrument is very, very uh, respond to the nature. It's like water and the wind. I hope you will enjoy this instrument and our music. Thanks. Hi, my name is Stefan. Uh, I joined Purple Bamboo a few years ago. I started playing with this instrument called Sheng. 
Um, and after a while, there was a, a time that we don't have any DZ players, so I started to learn DZ. And now I became the DZ instructor for the pen, Purple Bamboo. So I'll start to introduce um, this Zheng here. So this is a unique instrument which can play multiple notes at the same time, for example. And so it can play many uh, complicated and sophisticated uh, harmonics. So this is why I like this instrument. And as for DZ here, this is quite similar to the Western flute. The unique part, part of this flute is that it has the uh, one of the holes is covered by a bamboo membrane, so it let it produce a very unique sound. A bit brighter than the Western flute. Um, I'll be playing both of those instruments in the piece. I hope you all like it. Thank you. The piece that we are going to play is called Happiness Ear. My name is Shang Ning, and I'm the president of the uh, Purple Bomb Ensemble. And this is the instrument I play. The name of the instrument is Er Hu. The R the R is means two, which uh, means there's there's two string for the instrument. And also uh, the Hu is the name of of this instru instrument, and it. Um, it is a really traditional Chinese instrument of China, and it has more than a thousand years in China. I'm Barbara. I'm the percussionist for this ensemble, and I joined the Purple Bamboo in January of 2020, uh, right before the pandemic closed things up. Um, I, joined, I met Jing in uh, Music Education Without Borders class, of Irish music at uh, the Fred Fox School of Music. And Jing invited me to join Purple Bamboo um, from that class. And for this piece that we just played, um, I was playing the cha, which are symbols. They're different from the Turkish symbols that you would traditionally see 
in a wind ensemble or an orchestra here, they are smaller and they have a larger bell. And I've been playing the muyo, which are, that means wooden fish. Uh, we call them temple blocks in English. And they have fish on the front of them embracing a pearl, which symbolizes unity. And the muyo otherwise, uh, they stand for wakeful attention. So the fish is there, very relaxed looking, but very awake. And if you startle him, he gets away. I love that imagery of the wakeful attention of the fish that Barbara shared with us. Each instrument has such unique sounds, but I have to say that I found the arhu particularly fascinating. And it's really cool to learn a bit about Chinese culture through the names and descriptions of the instruments. Which one was your favorite? Tell us in the chat. Up next, we'll be joined by award-winning Gu Zheng player Jing Sha. She'll be sharing more about Purple Bamboo Ensemble and some of her own work. Stay tuned after the interview for a special performance by Jing and her husband, Ben. So tell us a little bit about Purple Bamboo. Uh, so Purple Bamboo Ensemble was launched by the ethnomusicologist and the professor from the Fred Fox School of Music. And uh, her name is um, Sturman, Dr. Sturman, Janet, Janet, Janet Dr. Sturman. Yes, and she launched this uh, uh, the Asian Music Ensemble to involve the students, give them the experience to uh, to uh, give them the opportunity to experience the Asian music, mm -hmm. and then yeah, it's grow up and up and, and up, and then I just uh, I'm taking care of this ensemble now. Excellent. So I know at one point you said that you had up to thirty people in the ensemble and right now how many people do you have? <laughs> we only have eight, eight around people. Okay, now. Yeah. so it sort of grows and and shrinks a little bit as people leave the university. Yeah. Are, is it primarily students or faculty? Yeah, it's actually this is man, involves different peoples in here. We have the students and several faculties and also from the community members. We oh, involved okay. a lot of community members here now. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And so where do you find, how do people find out about Purple Bamboo and then join your organization? So we have, uh, we have several students, they can just um, promote, the, promote the ensemble when they meet their friends and the, they say, oh, please in, uh, enjoy our, uh, no, please come to our uh, Purple Bamboo Ensemble to rehearse together and sometimes I will uh, have some demonstration, for example, for the Oli. So when I demonstrate the music, I will invite them to our rehearsal too. Yeah, if they have, they are interested in that. Yeah, and after seeing you perform, I'm sure a lot of people think, wow, this is really <laughs> cool music. I want to be a part of this. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay, so I know that part of your background is intercultural studies. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so I'm joining the uh, Applied Intercultural Art Research Program at the uh, Graduate Interdisciplinary Program uh, since mm, 2019. So this is a totally new program. So I'm very excited oh, to be there. Okay. Yeah, I'm the first student oh, wow. <laughs> to oh, enroll cool. in this program. That's yeah. great. Yeah, and why I'm interested in that because uh, before I came to the USA, I, my background is a Chinese musician. Mm -hmm. So I gra uh, graduated from the Chinese China Conservatory, so it's only focused on the Chinese music, and I've been trained to uh, learn all the history and that. And now I, I'm very, very curious about other instruments and uh, mm -hmm. other cultures and other music. So I really want to know more about them, and uh, and also I really like the applied the the words applied. So what can music do or serve for the community? For that, mm -hmm. so that's why I joined this uh, program. And my major is ethnomusicology, and my minor is health promotion. So I hope that I can oh. use the uh, music to promote the human health and the human well-being. Yeah. So is that looking at sort of music as therapies, or what's the connection between music and health? How does that um, blend together? Yeah, I think I will from the angle of the culture how a culture to connect people together and also for their mental health. For example, during the pandemic, mm -hmm. I was struggled to think what I can do. Yeah. I can play music, but how can I 
help others. I know many people have suffered too. So what can I do? So I really appreciate that Yo Yo Ma, the great uh, celloist, and he uh, launched the the project, say, uh, the Songs of Comfort. So it really, really gives people the soothing feel and it suits their mental health and not that stressful and everyone is isolated in their home but now we use the music to connect everybody together so I really like uh, his idea too yeah and that he is, is a, yeah that's a beautiful idea and you're right because during the pandemic I really relied on music and I watched a lot of music videos and it really you're right it really was very soothing and I think that's probably true for a lot of people <laughs> So I know, besides Purple Ensemble, you also have a um, duo that you perform with your husband, and he is playing a Western instrument, and you've got your Eastern instrument. So thinking about that ethnomusicology bit, how does that sort of live with Purple Ensemble on one side and then this duo on the other? So this duo is very special. So we, uh, we have the concert named when East meets the West. Uh -huh. So we really hope that the East meets the West can create some uh, some new dialogue between each of us. So we can, and but I think between uh, when we start to the dialogue, the uh, before we start the dialogue, we need to have a mutual understanding with each other's instruments, your musical language, and all the culture behind the. Uh, behind the music, so I think that's a really, really exciting project to mm -hmm. to know that. Yeah. Yes, and then thinking about that bridge, right? That's yes. a very interesting bridge between two different cultures as mm. well. Okay, well, we look forward to hearing that piece. Thanks. Okay. The piece we are going to play is called Oriental by Spanish composer Enrique Granados.
Welcome back. And now we're super excited to introduce you to another guest. We have Ben Hu and we've got Jing Xiao again from uh, Duo Xinhuasari. So welcome to you both. We're excited to learn more about your um, experiences as artists and musicians. So we did talk a little bit about that East meets West and West and some of the ethnomusicology mm -hmm. uh, perspective. So tell us a little bit about that East meets West in your music. Yeah, I mean, as a guitarist, it's, it's hard to avoid folk music because our repertoire is, you know, um, hard, uh, heavily influenced by different folk music, like Spanish music, even flamenco, or or we have part of the traditional, uh, the classic music, mm -hmm. sort of. Um, yeah. It's it's hard to avoid it. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's very so popular. Yeah, and the idea of our duo is to, you know, to present to people this fusion of of the East and West, sort of European and um, and and this with this Guzheng mm -hmm. from China. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of um, hard to find the repertoire for us because, you know, we are probably th the only one who's right, <laughs> doing right. this, right. The only one, at least I know. So mm -hmm. we started by, you know, um, listening to different music and look for the, the meeting point sort of, of, the connecting of pieces. different, mm -hmm. different culture. Like, mm -hmm. for example, we started um, arranging a couple of um, Manuel de Falla mm -hmm. pieces. Because you know Spain has a lot of Oriental influences because it yeah. was occupied by the, by the Arabs right. for centuries. So that's why, you know, flamenco has these Phrygian scales, you know, which sounds yeah. Oriental. It's oh, not, interesting, it's yeah. It's not the traditional European mm -hmm. um, classical, uh, like major and minor right. system. So we started there, like, sort of um, looking for the commonalities between different cultures. Mm -hmm. Because, um, and later we discovered, you know, interestingly enough, the so-called, you know, you traditional classical music is actually also influenced by, you know, Chinese music or mm -hmm. Asian music or Middle Eastern music. Mm -hmm. It's not very pure. There's nothing pure, yeah. you yeah. know, in culture. Like we are that. always, yeah. you know, connected. Listen it's just we don't realize. We yeah. are looking at mostly differences between us, mm -hmm. but not similarities. Right, right. Tell us a little bit about the song that you played for us. Why did you guys choose that particular song to play? Yeah, the song we, we just played is called Oriental. Um, it's from uh, Granado's 12 Spanish Dances. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a piano suite. Um, and the second movement is called Oriental. And, and um, the piece itself already tells that it's uh, you know, inspired by by the sound of 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 the East, mm -hmm. like yes. I can imagine the Middle Eastern Arab. You know, the piece is is in a con contemplative mood. Mm -hmm. I can imagine looking at the landscape of mm -hmm. of the desert. Mm -hmm. You know, feel the infinity, and and the middle part has sort of um, it's 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 singing like it's like. Um, very beautiful melody repeated mm -hmm. three times, whereas the second time here in our arrangement played on the guzheng has a a lot of like Arabic ornament. Mm -hmm. Yes. So mm -hmm. um, we thought it's it's a perfect piece for for us to to present to yeah. the audience. And yeah, it's a beautiful piece. Yeah, I really love this piece because I feel 
even though this is different culture, like this is from the, it's a Spanish composer to write an um, Arabic uh, flavor piece, mm -hmm. and we are from China <laughs> and we yeah. present it, but I found something is, the common thing is, the feeling is the, the, the common thing, and I also feel this piece is full of the nostalgia. And even though we are from different cultures, but we also have the nostalgia is the same thing. We miss our homeland, we miss the landscape. Yeah, I think that's, yeah. I like that. And also, it's, it's, so a, it's a European um, imagination of the misty east. You mm. know? It's, it's true. It's mysterious. It it's like yeah. when Mozart wrote a la Turca, yeah. this march a la Turca, yeah. he's imagining the Turkish music. Yeah. But the actual tur Turkish music may sound different, you know, but it's, it's, a, it's a fascination of, mm -hmm. like the name of our duo, you know, duo right. Chinois yes. series so is that. the mm -hmm. European fascination of, of the Far East culture. So what does duo chinoiseries mean? What does chinoiserie actually mean in French? Chinoiserie is, um, like what I said, a fascination, European fascination of the Far East culture, like uh, painting, mm -hmm. ceramics, or music, or any Eastern elements that mm -hmm. were brought of arts and to the European culture. culture. Yeah. That's why during that time in every palace, in Europe, they used to have the Chinese room. With oh, the, I did not know that. With the Chinese wallpaper, and that's that was like in oh. fashion during that time. Interesting. In thinking about this universal language of music, and we've talked um, uh, many different ways about it, what would you like your audience to um, know about yourselves through your music, or what would you like to convey to your audience through your music? I think one of the amazing thing about music is that um, when you're in a concert hall, no matter where are you from, whether from you know, Europe or, or Asia or mm -hmm. Africa or mm -hmm. America, they are in the same you know, empathy of emotion, yeah. that they feel sad at the same time, yeah. or they feel excited or, or happy. You know? This is kind of amazing because it music can bring people together even if just for that moment you know we know we are together yeah. and with artists with the music with yeah. all sort of emotion so with our duo the idea is to let them forget that it's a chinese instrument and, and the guitar they should forget about that because we want our music to transcend borders of, of anything no you know um mm -hmm. con confinement or yeah. or it's Sore just it's just we want them to feel yeah. music as as a unity yeah. that's beautiful yeah i love that so how can our audience learn more about your duo and what's in the future for you both um we have a website that we we try to keep it updated. It's a very <laughs> nice website. Yeah, and uh, we'll Lots post new videos and, and okay. our, um, I mean, concert updates. Okay. We also have a face Facebook page. Okay, great. Yeah, you can just search um, Duo Shinwa Seri. Okay. It will come up. Um, we'll record um, our debut album this summer. Oh, good. Uh, That's which exciting. <laughs> Yay. Which will include the new uh, commission pieces. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Okay. And um, I know that on the website, you've got some of your pieces and videos that we can see. Will you be including some of um, some Spanish pieces as well in your new recording? Yeah, we've arranged some, um, of course, the piece you saw, the medieval chant mm -hmm. from Spain. Mm -hmm. um, we've arranged some um, WC piano oh, pieces. Interesting. Okay. And plus, oh, I'm the new pieces. so looking <laughs> forward to this. Great. Okay. Well, it was so nice to meet you both and to have you here in the studio. We're so thankful that you shared this beautiful music with us, and we look forward to keeping uh, Duo Chinoiserie in our playlist. Um, you can play it on YouTube, right? That's mm. where I think I found yes. the videos. Yeah. Yes. It's thank you. It's a pleasure. Mm. Thank you so much. <laughs> you. Okay, and thank you all. 
In our next segment, we'll continue enjoying Chinese music during a performance by Tucson Sino Dance. If you haven't met them yet, Tucson Sino Dance is an amateur dance troupe that has become an integral part of celebration activities for Southern Arizona's Chinese communities, including the Lunar New Year celebration and Tucson Meet Yourself. Their mission is to promote Chinese culture and heritage through dance. And I gotta tell you, it was an incredible experience to watch these dancers perform against the backdrop of blooming cacti and spring flowers at the Tucson Botanical Gardens. I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I did. And after the performance, we'll be joined by our guests for a live Q&A. So until then, make sure to keep your questions coming. Good morning, my name is Sharon Yang. I work at Pima County Public Library as a librarian, but this is not how I dress to work, apparently. So I wear a costume of Chinese folk dance because I am with a Tucson Sino dance group today, and we are going to perform one of our Chinese dance, Plum Blossom. <laughs> Welcome everyone, and thank you so much for your questions. They've been really great questions. You all know Jing from Purple Bamboo and Duo Chinoiserie. She's here with her husband, Ben. I'm also joined by Sharon Yang from Tucson Sino Dance, who you heard from earlier in the evening. And our moderator for the night is Xuan Zhou from the Pima County Public Library. Thank you guys all for being here tonight. We're going to be chatting and answering your questions. And as a reminder, this is a live Q&A and you can keep posting your questions in the chat. Make sure to stay tuned until the end because we do have a special surprise for you all. Schwan, over to you. 
Alrighty. Hi, good evening, everyone. Alrighty, so um, the first question is going to direct it to um, both groups of you. Um, so we know that May was Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, and I know both of you have devoted a lot of your time and energy into the AAPI Heritage Month celebrations. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about what you have done and you, what you plan to do in the future to continuously highlighting the um, AAPI cultures in our community in Tucson? So Jing, how about, do you want to go first? Yeah, I can do that. So last month, we organized a concert in celebration of the AAPI Heritage Month. So the intent of this concert was to use the cultural expression um, to support this community and to, uh, how to say that, to support the, to let more the audience to know, to understanding of the contributions and the traditions of the AAPI people, and uh, also to build the solidarity of the people from different cultures, backgrounds. Yeah, so that's what we did last month. And in the future, I, um, I think the Purple Bamboo Ensemble will uh, continue to provide the uh, opportunities to uh, local folks to experience the Asian music and the culture. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jane. Um, and how about you, Sharon, as a library employee and also a dancer from Tucson Sino Dance? Uh, first, I want to say thank you for having me here. And I think, uh, yeah, so I'm, uh, I work for the library and uh, in libraries, we always have a uh, programs highlighting the cultures of the world, including Asian uh, American and uh, Pacific Islanders. Uh, for last month's uh, first being a supporter, so I watch some AAPI themed uh, concerts. Uh, some are international uh, nationally and then some are um, from the local, like Tucson Chinese Culture Center and also AAPI concert from Jing. Uh, which is a great. Um, so um, it should be an ongoing thing. And uh, so May is a month to raise this awareness um, because there are two significant events happen in the US history. Uh, first is uh, the earliest Japanese immigrants came to the United States in May, 1843. And second is, uh, Oh, I'm a bit, I feel a little bit nervous. So second is uh, uh, the Transcontinental Railroad was completed in May in 1869. And thanks to the tens of thousands of Chinese laborers. Uh, what I want to say that because um, Asian Americans has been here for a long time and also the great contribution to this country. So it's very important to learn that part of history. And also, being a library employee, uh, we educate the community. So uh, well, I want to talk about the new team uh, formed in February of this year. Uh, it's called Biblio Lotus. So Xuan and we both are um, founding members of this team. Um, the team did a great work for the resources and the book lists um, in the library webpage. Uh, it will ha it has some uh, book lists and also films highlighting Asian cultures and also community interview interviews. Um, in the future, we want to work harder to outreach to more Asian communities and to raise Asian voices. So anything more, Xue can also add to it. I think you answered it very well, Sharon. Thank you so much. And thank you for the history you shared with us. Uh, then my follow-up question would be, how can us, the audience members, help, help to support these efforts dedicated to um, celebrating AAPI cultures and elevating AAPI voices? Uh, for the library, and uh, we are talking to the people every day. So if you have more ideas uh, or uh, relevant like Asian culture, you want to reach out to us, then you can email to Xuan or me, or you can use uh, Ask a Librarian 
uh, on the library website. So again, so our library website for the contents of AAPI is www.library.pima.gov slash lotus. So for the music part, I think the listening is a big support. So we really hope that our solid message can be heard by more people and the seed of the solidarity can disseminate and foster a more inclusive the social environment. Yeah. Very, very well said to both of you. Um, and oh, Cheryl. Do you want to have, bring up an audience question? Mm -hmm. Go we ahead. do have an audience question, and it's a, it's a little bit related to sort of this idea of solidarity, but also uh, speaks to the pandemic, which is how do different kinds of arts, such as music and dance, help us to unite and ease the difficulties during the pandemic? Because we're still in a pandemic. So these are tips to move on with. Yeah, I think personally, I think the musical engagement really helped me to release my anxiety and stress in many different ways during the pandemic such as I will uh, oh, no I listened to the my favorite songs and I uh, played music mindfully and uh, I also make some music with Bing and my daughter Aria so yeah those kind of activities can help me to soothe my mental health and also can have the uh, enhance our family relationships. Yeah, so it's like an emotional support for us. Mm. Um, <laughs> do you want to say anything or? <laughs> well, I think um, I agree with Jane. I mean, uh, the amazing thing about music or any kind of art form is that it can affect your emotion directly. It can bypass your logic, <laughs> even though we are here talking about culture, uh, different things, but the real experience when you listen to a piece of music is to let you forget this. <laughs> it bypass your logic and affect your emotion. That's why, so listening to, uh, I mean, different kind of music will, will affect you emotionally. So, um, yeah, so that's all the story. <laughs> Yeah, so actually before this, I watched the um, show uh, the, uh, for a while, for a little bit, and I feel calm by uh, you to the duo. I feel like, okay, so calm and feel soothing. And uh, so the art of music or dance, they all kind of have a connection of, about uh, between people. And uh, the dancing make me feel happier and uh, is a relief stress and uh, lift my spirit. Yeah, because you're also physically moving. And that's, <laughs> that's like exercise. <laughs> All right, I do have another question that's really related to our Tucson community. As we all know, Tucson is a very diverse and very dynamic community with many, many artists um, in various um, artist, artistic forms. How do you think art, um, music, or art, or dance in general impact your life, specifically here in Tucson, um, in our own community. For example, if you view some um, painting by local artists, will that inspire you to compose some music piece or, well, I don't know, for Sharon to dance a little bit? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's all about communication, right? Um, um, artists <laughs> receive inspiration from all sort of things. <laughs> like, um, you know what? I mean, not even artists. I mean, nor even normal people can do that. Just, you know, sometimes what, watching a movie can inspire you. Um, yeah, so it's definitely a help to communicate culturally. Um, I don't know what, what you think. Yeah, I agree with you. And also I found my community through the music. So which brings me a sense of belonging to the community. And also I have made many friends through the music. So like being said, this is like a communication. It's a, it's a form of communication. Maybe it's non-verbal language such as... Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. Be, it's beyond um, language. Right? Yeah, so it's like an intuitive feeling 
just goes direct to the heart. It's not the speaking conversation, but it's the conversation from heart to, to heart. heart. Yeah, so music is <laughs> like a home for us or a bridge to, yeah, build the yeah. build the connection. Totally, arts definitely have the power to bond people from different backgrounds together. Um, and then my next question will be directing to Sharon. So could you please tell us a little bit more about Tucson Sino Dance and how did you find this dance community with whom you share the same passion? Uh, yeah, uh, Tucson Sino Dance um, was formed in 2003. Uh, it's a nonprofit. A uh, group. Um, the mission is to promote uh, Chinese culture via uh, authentic Chinese dances. So um, I do not have a dance background, and uh, because uh, most of our dance members are uh, have their own, they're not trained to be dancers. And we started in kind of late age too. <laughs> uh, our uh, uh, artistic director or instructor, she, uh, Li Hua Pang, she is one who has a professional uh, dance background. And uh, so work, work very hard and strive to be close to professional. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, for this piece look like only a few minutes, but we practiced uh, like all the weekends, Saturday or Saturdays and uh, try our best. And so, uh, we found each other mostly um, through the Chinese communities and uh, share the same passion and love dancing and also improve the health of body and uh, mind. Um, and when I joined, it was in 2008. Um, so it also happened when they when I was working at the library. <laughs> so library is a part of community. Uh, so the when a customer came in and then we asked a few questions after a chat, and then she said, "Do you want to join dance group?" So that it was our uh, Li Hua Peng's dance director. So I'm very happy to join the group. Go ahead, Cheryl. So this question is for you, Sharon, um, and it was someone talking about how beautiful the dance was, and they would like to know what are the most important traits a dancer should have? I guess I love dance and music. <laughs> when I dance, I just kind of feel, uh, you know, um, just forgot other things. And But there are a lot of uh, culture, um, the, a lot of uh, background, like a classical dance, classical Chinese dance, there will be more culture and different kind of refined art mm -hmm. uh, involved. And ethnic group will be all based on the um, different ethnic culture, how they lived. Uh, I would say as long as you love the Chinese culture and you love the movement, you'll be good choice. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much, Sharon. So um, I know that the dance piece that you performed, uh, you and your group, Tucson Sino Dance, performed for this event um, is called Plum Blossom. Can you tell us a little bit more about this dance piece? Is there a special meaning behind this dance? Uh, this dance we learned uh, during a uh, pandemic, uh, started the last year, so by performing, uh, not performing, by uh, practice outdoors. Uh, so this is a classical Chinese dance. So the moment of classical Chinese dance are very, very elegant. Um, of course, the pro they know really, really well how to show their art, but we just, you can still see glimpses of moment very elegant. And the piece is about the flower, plant blossom. And uh, uh, we think this can convey uh, the resilience of this flower because it can grow in very, very hard environments and still show the pretty and um, still very strong. And I think this uh, resonate us during this um, difficult time. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Go ahead, Cheryl. So these are, um, we've got several questions about um, pieces that duo Xinhua Zuri is working on. So they'd like to know what new pieces you've been exploring recently. And a related question is, do you ever compose your own music for playing together? Yeah, so um, we've recently commissioned uh, several new pieces. 
So that's what we are kind of working on because we have, we have a recording project coming up in, in July. Um, I don't know. So far, we've been just arranging pieces, right? We've, we've never tried to compose, but that's a good, that's a good question. Maybe we should. <laughs> <laughs> Our future project. <laughs> yes. And what type of what type of new pieces are you exploring? Are those more along the lines of um, Spanish influence, um, or is it a secret? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a secret. <laughs> yeah, we've we've commissioned composers from different backgrounds to compose music for us. Um, we have a French composer, Matthias Duplessis, and. Uh, an American, Brazilian American composer Sergio Assad, um, the Japanese composer Yusuke. Um, yeah, so we are, they, they really compose different styles. <laughs> it's very interesting, um, very diverse. Um, yeah, and those, and those, also the theme of the, those music is uh, related to the uh, Chinese history stories, so it's very, very, very interesting. Yeah, <laughs> we're really looking forward to share it with you when the CD released. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think I look forward to it. I hope your library can obtain a copy of CDs too. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yeah, so we have all um, talked about this pandemic. Um, and I'm just wondering how this pandemic uh, affected your group, the, your groups of artists, um, the way you practice the way you perform and the way you be be in be there with each other. So for the Purple Bamboo Ensemble, we uh, had to rehearse online. So <laughs> it's really, really difficult because we cannot play at the same time, together at the same time because of the, uh, the, the latency. latency. Yeah. And when we play in person, rehearse in person, and we create the sound space around of us that we created it so everyone can feel each other but now everyone just stay in their own space and so we can really can we cannot really just perceive the musical um, yeah. vibrations we are lucky that we still can rehearse together <laughs> <laughs> so um for purple bamboo ensemble have you tried to perform outdoors well, the open air, open space um, affect the, you know, the 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 final um, performance, the final musical piece. Uh, so far, not yet. Maybe for the next semester, yeah, we will maybe do some outdoor performances or activities. Yeah, mm -hmm. and maybe the future. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, soon, future soon. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, for our group, uh, we uh, this class has to be stopped. Um, we cannot have the classes inside the studio. Um, so it was stopped for a while until uh, October last year. Uh, our director, Ying Zhang, she uh, organized this outdoor classes and with the support of the art director, uh, Li Hua Peng. And then we just find space outside and we kind of teasing like a square dancing, <laughs> which, which is very popular in China. The, um, uh, older generation, they practice outside. Uh, so yeah, no, we are not square dancing. <laughs> Anyhow, so the ground, uh, you know, it was difficult in the beginning. Um, we couldn't, we cannot wear the dancing shoes, which you can do better. Um, but the, the ground is kind of harsh and uh, we go really early. Uh, so we don't interfere other people. Um, sometimes in winter morning is really, really cold, but when <laughs> after you're dancing, you'll get warm up. But I'm glad that we have this opportunity. We can uh, learn the uh, dances in person with a teacher. So I did leave the online uh, dancing class too, but it will feel different. And uh, in another way, we also uh, take this chance to socialize and uh, after the dance, and uh, again, our dance direct, uh, direct, uh, director, um, Ying Zhang, she is amazing cook also. And she always brings some treats every time. And 
So we will chat a little bit, feel more mentally connect, uh, happy. So Cheryl, maybe you, you can visit us sometime. <laughs> Thank you so much. Cheryl, do you have a, another question? I do, I do. And the um, uh, next couple of questions are for Jing. Um, how hard would it be for someone in Tucson to learn to play the guzheng? Oh, uh, to learn the guzheng? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can find me. <laughs> you can find the performance ensemble. Oh, yeah. right. Uh, yeah, but the instrument maybe uh, you needed to order it from the Los Angeles. That's the biggest uh, instruments industry, Asian uh, instru musical instrument industry in the U.S. Yeah. And so, in Purple Bamboo, can someone join that is an amateur, like they 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 barely know the instrument, or do you prefer people to come who have at least some understanding of some of the instruments? Yes, very good question. Yes, we welcome everyone if uh, uh, with the background or without the background. Yes, okay. we will see. You can experience the the group or the in, in the mu in music. Uh, first, and then you can choose mm -hmm. the what kind of instrument that you really prefer to try. Yeah, it. maybe yeah. Um, you can, you she can start with percussion. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really oh, like yeah. engagement, not mm -hmm. like a performance. Yeah, we have performance the small group for the performance part, mm -hmm. but we also want to focus on the engagement, community engagement. Oh, yeah. okay, that's great to know. Maybe I'll come. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So uh, related to those instruments, um, because we live in a very, very dry place in, uh, here in Arizona, uh, what, what are some things that you have to do to take care of your instruments here in the desert? Well, um, we have two very big humidifier running 24 mm. hours, <laughs> seven, 20, 24 seven. <laughs> wow. Yes, and that's the only way. Okay, that's interesting. So uh, consume like uh, two gallons of water every day. <laughs> wow. Let's see how dry it is. Okay, and and somebody asked about koto. Do you teach koto? No, I want to learn koto too. <laughs> <laughs> I have koto at home, but I really want to learn the the koto because there are also the zither families the Koto, Gujeng, and Gayagam. So yeah, that's great. Great. So if anybody in the audience knows Koto, you can connect with Jing and you guys can have a little exchange. <laughs> Koto and Gujeng. Yes. OK. OK, so I think we have time for one more question. And this will be, um, we'll direct this to um, Ben and um, Jing again. And this is going again back to the idea of the instruments. Um, somebody asked if there's anything in the Chinese repertoire that's like an, uh, an accordion. Uh, I think the most uh, similar instrument uh, with the accordion is the sheng that Stefan played in, in the uh, video before. Yeah, okay. and so there's the uh, aerophonic instruments, and uh, also they can play the chords. Yeah, most uh, Chinese instruments can only play the melody, the one line melody, but the sheng can play the chords. Yeah, so I think that's the most uh, similar. That's the closest one. Mm, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Alrighty, so is it already time for Jing and Bing to go prepare for our little surprise this evening? Okay. I think so. I will let you go. And uh, I do have one last question for Sharon, just out of my own curiosity. I really admire your performance. The, the, the dance moves, they are so, so elegant. And if we want to watch more of Tucson Sino, Sino dance performances. Where where should we go? Oh, thank you, Jen. <laughs> uh, for uh, actually for um, last performance, they were online, the virtual uh, Chinese New Year celebration at uh, Tucson Chinese Culture Center. I believe that was 
uh, organized by Jin and uh, Tina Liao from the um, Culture Center. And then uh, I hope that uh, the, it, everything get back to normal. And then in that case, Tucson next performance will be at Tucson Meet Yourself. Uh, you can find their website. They should list all the events um, for the scheduled dances. And then after that will be during Chinese New Year time. Um, we will be uh, performing definitely at Tucson Chinese Culture Center. Every year they always organize uh, cultural celebration. Uh, so you can just uh, email us too to our director uh, or I forgot her email, but, <laughs> or just come to me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. It looks like Jing and Bing um, and their lovely daughter are ready. Uh, Bing, don't forget to unmute yourself. Trio Chinoiserie. Bravo. Bravo. Oh, that was great. Thank you guys so much. What a treat to see the whole family perform. So I do want to um, thank you all for uh, joining us tonight. I want to thank our performers, especially. I've got a little something to share with you all. Um, we do want to thank again, um, Duo Shimwazuri, Purple Bamboo, and Tucson Sino Dance for their contributions to our event tonight. We're so honored to get to know you all and learn about the amazing work that you're doing right here in Southern Arizona. And we also want to thank our wonderful partners at Pima County Public Library, including the Welcome to America team and the Biblio Lotus team for helping us to put together this fabulous event. And we would also like to thank the Tucson Chinese Cultural Center, the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, or OLLI, at the U of A, the Southwest Folklife Alliance, the University of Arizona Asian Pacific American Student Affairs Center for helping us to get the word out about this great program. And a big thanks also to Tucson Botanical Gardens for allowing us to use their beautiful space for filming. It was a beautiful day out there with Sharon and her team. And we want to thank you all, our viewers, for tuning in and helping us celebrate AAPI Heritage Month. We would appreciate it if you could fill out your sur the survey about tonight's event and look for an email with a link to a recording to, sh um, to share this great recording with friends and family who weren't able to make it tonight. So thank you all again. Thank you to our performers, our partners, and our audience. It was a great event and very exciting to see these beautiful things going on in our community. So thank you again and have a great night, everybody. Bye. Bye.